What's up guys and welcome back to another epic unboxing. Um, kind of epic if you're into the nostalgia-ness and that is of course the legendary Dex 2, which was originally printed back in 2016, but this one is a reprint. I never got my hands on the 2016 first editions. Uh, I did want to bring out like a, a quick little compare contrast of the first edition prices versus the unlimited prices. Uh, obviously, you definitely want the first edition prices. And I would imagine the box will have first edition on it. But this is of course the unlimited version. But we're still going to do a compare and contrast of those prices. Just for a collector's standpoint to see how, it mu how, how much it changed from the original release of 2016 to now, which is now 2024. Probably not much, so we can determine, was it a collector set back then? We'll, go, we'll find out in this episode. But uh, on top of that, I also have a couple of these, um, these blisters that I got, uh, of packs that were released from this year as well. And of course, we have the Maze of Millennia, and we have two of these of the Proton Super, sorry, uh, Proton, Phantom Nightmare. I want to say Proton for some reason, I don't know why. Because I just did a Proton video. Which of course was that video right here. But anyway, enough rambling. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Legendary Dex 2, the reprint. Now, as I mentioned, it came out in 2016, but it comes out with some uh, three decks essentially, which is of course the Yugi deck, the Kaiba deck, and the Joey deck. Featuring in the Yugi deck is the Exodia, the Forbidden One. And of course we have Blue Eyes White Dragon for Seto Kaiba. And we have the Red Eyes Bee Dragon, not even the Black Dragon, but the Bee Dragon uh, for Joey. And of course there's some secret rare cards that will enhance the deck apparently. And that's of course Dark Magician, which kind of is a given for Yugi. The Eternity, oh, sorry, Eternal Soul, and the Dark Burning Attack and a Dark Burning Magic. Now, this is the description for the, the original. I would imagine it will come out again for the reprints, um, but we'll, we'll definitely see those. It talks about these tokens. I'm not sure this will have tokens, but if, it, if it's anything like the original, you would hope there's those same tokens, but I guess we'll see when we see. But let's go ahead and open this bad boy and see what we get in the Legendary Dex 2. Now, funny enough, uh, I was trying to find Legendary Deck 1 and Legendary Deck 2, but I think they're pretty high up there in value. Like, let's 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 take a, some quick eBay prices of those things real quick. Now, the Legendary Deck 1, I'm, I'm seeing two different stuff here, but I'm not sure if this is the right one. But um, basically, I'm seeing one right now um, for the 2015 first edition sealed box king of games legendary deck one and it's saying that they're trying to sell it for 219 dollars now the legendary deck two first edition now i'm only seeing well, i'm seeing two as well but again i'm not sure if it's like the right thing because this might they might this might be the reprint i'm not sure but i'm seeing one for 248 dollars 95 cents for the first edition box for legendary deck two and the Legendary Deck 2 for this one, apparently, is saying it's $99.98. So again, um, it does say that the product does not include a box, so maybe that's why it's cheaper. Whereas the other one is a sealed one for $248. So give or take, guys, give or take. Um, I see one for $195 for it, so it's actually quite up there for the first edition version of this one. Um, but I don't want to spend that kind of money right now. You, can, you, you, you like this originally came out, believe it or not, for $29.95 or something like that, $29.99. And now they're trying to sell it for $248. So just that fact alone makes the box just sealed up worth it. Again, we're going to check how the individual cards themselves stack up, but the box itself sealed seems like it's up there and, and we can have, um, consider that a good investment, I guess. But you have to keep the box for a very long time though. All right, let's see what this bad boy is about. Now from the collector standpoint, I don't see myself like needing to get the sealed box. Uh, it's cool to have the decks, sure, but this is meant to be more of a, uh, I guess you can say more of a, uh, a structure deck, if you will, uh, because it does have three decks you can use in combat. So I'm sure there's gonna be like YouTubers like Team APS doing like duels um, with, uh, with these decks. And um, if, if they do, uh, maybe I'll link it as well. So you guys can check that out, um, but just for the box itself, obviously it looks pretty pretty. It's not actual like metal, it's, it's, it's just plastic. It looks kind of metal-y, but it's not, it's just like, um, I don't know, cardboard, I guess you could say, like shiny cardboard. Um, but I do like the way it looks. Sorry for the reflection. It's open. Ooh. 
got some promo cards on top. So we'll check out that in a moment. And then of course, you see the three decks right there. Prominently in the front, we have the Maiden with Eyes of Blue. We'll look at all the cards individually as well as we get to it. And this is the Cypher the Sky Dragon. So there's that obviously, I think the Yugi one. And the Black Stone of Legend. So it seems like that's gonna be like a Joey deck right there. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. I think that's all. Just a, nothing else there. And then I'm not sure if I showed this one already, but this is the, the back of it as well. Nothing really to, to look at in the side. More than likely, we'll probably do with that is uh, remove the black plastic and just go ahead and uh, store extra cards that I'll either want to sell or keep. But we're gonna go ahead and start with the Joey deck here. Nice little like little sleeve here we can actually uh, pull out to like make it open nice and easily. That's actually kind of satisfying actually. <laughs> Very satisfying. Look at that, oh my God, per perfect. We'll do a better example in the, in the next one, but yeah. That looks very cool. All right, I'm not gonna show every single card, uh, but I had the full card list, of course, in the description, but we just look at the ones that are like, you know, ultra rares or higher, um, maybe, maybe some of the supers, and of course, um, you know, any cards that I find of value. But, uh, but we have the Black Stone of Legend. Now keep in mind, these are the unlimited prices. So um, we're, we're gonna go ahead and check out what the prices are for the first editions. The Blackstone of Legends. So the first edition price would have been $4.11, but let's see what the unlimited price would be. According to this, like I'm not sure if it's updated or not, but the unlimited price as of today, because of course the prices eventually will depreciate dramatically for the unlimiteds. Since I got this like three days early, it's probably not fully updated, but however, comma the price for this one the blackstone of legend the unlimited version is four dollars and 17 cents which i think is identical to the original actually it's more than original for some reason it's more than a first edition which um, i'm pretty sure that's going to be quite false in due time and just as as a curiosity i just want to read it real quick it's you can tribute this card Special Summon 1 level 7 or lower Red Eyes monster from your deck except for the Red Eyes Black Chick or B Chick. If this card is in your graveyard, you can target 1 level 7 or lower Red Eyes from monster from your graveyard except for the Red Eyes B Chick. Uh, shuffle it into your deck and if you do, add this card to your hand. You can also use 1 Blackstone of Legends effect per turn and only once during that turn. Okay, that's actually quite useful. Quite useful. All right, the next uh, ultra rare here. The second is actually not that bad, so that, that, that's actually kind of kind of good to know. All right, this is the Return of the Red Eyes trap card ultra rare. All right, so the first edition price is forty nine cents. However, the uh, unlimited version is forty one cents, so right around the same price. Right around the same price, forty one cents. All right, next ultra rare. I believe this might be the last ultra rare is the Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon. Looks very beastly. All right, so the uh, first edition price, $1.35, however, comma. Uh, this one is $1.18 for the Unlimited, so not too shabby for the Unlimited price. They have a, a black, uh, black uh, Red Eyes Black Flare Dragon, the, I guess, the short print. This one is like 93 cents, so that is pretty good for a, uh, a common, ish short print card and i hate the fact that they made the red eyes a common card make it ultra rare or holographic or something else. so I, 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 don't, I don't like that the red eyes retro dragon very very cool the red eyes arch fiend of lightning is one of the the one of the feature cards but nothing shiny with it at all the black metal dragon very cool a classic Joey card right here, the Ace Raider. Another one, the Alligator Sword. And we have the Baby Dragon, Baby Dragon. And this hurts my, my heart seeing this one, but a common non-holographic Jinzo. That, 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 that they, they did it wrong. They did that my boy wrong. The Goblin Attack Force also was previously holographic as well. 
Gear Free the Iron Knight. I believe that was like a, at least a rare card. Rocket Warrior. I, I, think, I, I think I remember him using that. I can't remember exactly what season it was. He had the Blue Flame Swordsman. The Time Wizard, oh, that's cool. It's a classic. Again, non-ultra rare. The Phoenix Gear Free. The Gemini Summoner. Waifu Potential card here, the Dark Valkyria. Yeah, I'm kind of skipping some cards that are not as nostalgic to me, but again, the full list will be down in the description. So yeah, for the rest of the card, I'm just gonna kind of show it here, but uh, just so there's a, you know, you, you can see it, but I'm just gonna kind of fast forward a little bit because they're not super nostalgic to me, I don't think. But yeah. Keeper of the Shrines. Infernal Fire Blast. The Red Eyes Fusion. Cards of Redstone. We have to have the Palmization because if you're gonna have the Baby Dragon and, and Time Wizard, you need a Palmization. And the Scapegoat and the classic Joey card. Foolish Barrier. I don't remember that card at all. <laughs> Supervise. Mystical Space Typhoon. Symbol of Duty, like that feels like a Joey card, but I don't remember seeing him use that in anime. The Kunai's with Chain, that he definitely used in the anime. Red Eyes Spirit, just another, uh, you know, Red Eyes uh, support card. Call of the Haunted. The Tribute. Burst Breath, that doesn't ring a bell at all. Curse of Envious. I feel like that's more like a, that's, uh, not a Joey card, but like, uh, what was it? Uh, if, if uh, obviously the editors, if you could throw like a picture that the person I'm thinking of, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I forgot the guy's name, but he was definitely who I feel like you would use it more. Uh, we have a fusion, fusion here, Archfiend, a Black Skull Dragon. That was kind of cool. Oh, the, uh, I remember this card. The alligator, was it Swords Dragon? Was that Baby Dragon and uh, yeah, Alligator Sword? That's cool. And then a token card. So this is the token cards that we're talking about, the ultra rare token card. And this one actually might be, maybe worth something. I don't know, let, let's check it, check it out. It says limited edition. Okay, for the Joey one, it's 51 cents for the limited. I think it's about the same price for the uh, first edition version, I guess. If they even call it first edition. Yeah, it's about the same, same price. But that is the Joey side. Before we move into uh, Kaiba and uh, Yui, let's go and open, open some packs. We'll go ahead and go do this one first. The Amaze of Lenia, this is the first, I guess, pack to come out in 2024. And um, they had some decent cards when it first came out, but I think it, um, the hype died down. The card that you still want to get is, of course, that, uh, uh, what was that name of the card? <laughs> the Bonfire, we, we have yet to pull that card, even the ultra rare version. I wonder if that's still gonna be high value though. So the collector's rare version is $186.80. And then the collector's, um, collector's rare of the transaction rollback, which I believe we did pull. So definitely check that video out. Um, and then we have the Bonfire Ultra Rare at $74.36. So definitely some big value pulls there. So let's go ahead and pull the Bonfire. I believe it is one or two to the front maybe. Let's just do three to the front. All right, we have the Full Armored uh, Crystal Zero Lancer. The Earthbound Greater Line Walker. The Rescue. The uh, Altergeist Prime Banshee. The Synchro. Uh, Majespector Cyclone. And only a super rare here, the uh, Colorless Chaos King of the Dark World. 
probably not worth much at all. This one is uh, 64 cents. All right, next. One, two, four, I guess. All right, we have the Synchro Chase. The Sun God Unification. The Code Hack. Alert! The Double Warrior. The Combat Wheel. And a super rare only of the Ashka Pillar. I think that's how you pronounce it. Ashka? Ashka? I don't know. Ahsoka. Maybe that's what it is. Is it Ahsoka? I think it's Ahsoka. Yeah. Yeah. Because don't, 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 don't they have like a, uh, uh, like a Star Wars Ahsoka series or something like that in Disney Plus? I still haven't seen it, but I have recommendations of watching it. We're going to say the Kaiba deck for last because obviously, because Kaiba is awesome. But yeah, let me go ahead and do this again. This is like really cool. Or if I can show it on camera, if you guys see that at all. That is like satisfying, goes all the way around. And eventually it'll snap in place like so. And then you basically just reveal this. There we go. Yeah, and then you slide it. Whew, that's satisfying. That's fat. That's, that, that's a good uh, pack design. I like that a lot. All right, the first ultra rare here is Cypher the Sky Dragon, of course. We'll check out that price. So the, I guess the first edition price is 63 cents. So it's probably about the same for the, the unlimited price. Yeah, so about 63 cents for this right here for both limited or unlimited. Sorry. Uh, yeah, limited or limited, I guess. So not that high at all. The next ultra rare is, of course, Obelisk the Tormentor. Obelisk. You be the Obelisk. Yeah, so they're about the same um, for both versions. 59 cents. There's been so many reprints of the, the God cards. That's probably why it's been... Like certain, certain designs of it is just not that worth doing. And of course, you have to finish off with the Wing Dragon of Raw. Now this one's a little different. I don't know why this one's priced much, much higher. I'm not sure why, but this one is $5.37. This one's actually worth the most, which is kind of interesting. Kind of interesting. Maybe because it's maybe usable? I don't know. I mean, Obelisk is also usable technically as well. I mean, technically they're all not that usable. <laughs> because it requires like three sacrifices, I believe. Um, but yeah. All right, the next ultra rare from the Kaiba, sorry, the uh, Yuki side is the legendary Exodia Incarnate. The first edition, the first edition price is $3.20, but the unlimited price is $2.52. So still not too shabby, still not too shabby. Next ultra rare here is Ties of the Brethren. I don't remember Yugi, Yugi ever using this, so I don't know, maybe he used it that one time in that one episode in season nine. <laughs> First edition price is 32 cents, while the unlimited price is 28 cents. So these actually might be pretty realistic prices. The next is Obliverate. Obliverate, if I can pronounce it correctly. All right, the first edition price is a dollar and three cents, while the unlimited price is 76 cents. So a little bit close, uh, you know, about 20, 25 cents less. Now we're getting into the common cards here. Exodia, the forbidden one, just the head of Exodia. Of course, we have the right arm, the left arm, the right leg, and the left leg. And we have Exodia Necros, Dark Magician. Looks so weird with a common look to it. Dark Magician Girl, again, looks hideous as a uh, common card. Buster Blader, again, hideous as a, as a common card. It almost breaks my soul. Silent Magician, level eight. 
the tricky. I don't remember Yugi ever using this. I don't know. Salamagician level four, obviously. This one for sure he did use, the big shield Gardner. And then we have the Magicians of Valkyra. Very cute, very cute. The Blast Magician, just because he's a Magician card. The Block Man. Again, I don't remember you, you, him using this one. Maybe he did, I don't know. Marshmallow, did he use this one too? I don't know, I feel like he used it for like a, uh, a, um, a little small counter, but wasn't that super effective. Um, Segna, the gold stuff, sarcophagus. Swords of Revealing Light. That was definitely something he used. Magical Dimensions. And I've watched all the episodes too, of, uh, but then again, it's been a while since I, maybe I could do like a, a rewatch of it, maybe with my son Hunter. Uh, especially if he understands what's happening in the TV. Not just pretty lights and stuff like that. But uh, I definitely want to rewatch it with my son and see and kind of remember a lot of the older stuff that happened in the anime. But uh, definitely the, the most nostalgic and memorable for me is season one and season two. Um, I believe it was uh, Duelist Kingdom was season one. And then I think the Battle City or Battle something like that um, was uh, season two. Those are the most, most nostalgic for me. Like season three, four, and five, I believe it's like, it's not as in bad. Well, season three was kind of memorable too. Um, that's, they kind of dive more in the backstory of, um, you know, the Yu-Gi-Oh cards and stuff like that, and Egyptians. So that was kind of cool. Um, season four, I don't remember that much. It feels like more like the, the virtual one. And I wasn't really too into the, the virtual ones. Um, and season five, I, I, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm confusing some of the, the stuff around. And um, obviously I'm kind of, uh, you know, skimming through a lot of these cards because a lot of these are, you know, you can definitely like, pause it and read it. But uh, yeah, I, I just don't like looking at common cards and you kind of get this gist of like what cards they have for the Yuki side. But the one card I will price out though is this one, which does look pretty badass, the token card. The token Yugi card is a 73 cents for the first edition, but the unlimited is 73 cents. So about the same price, about the same price. All right, the final deck here. And we do have, of course, the, this the mysterious one. I'm, I'm kind of blocking it right now so I don't see it myself. But yeah, we have this mysterious one that we, that's wrapped up. We'll check out what's in there as well. But yes, let's open this. Whew. I love that so much. All right. The first card here is, of course, the uh, Maiden of the Eyes of Blue. Obviously, we need that for any Blue Eyes deck. All right. So the first edition is, well, 37 cents. So that's actually really low. And then the unlimited version, which surprisingly is a little bit higher, but I'm sure it will depreciate as well. But this one is 44 cents as of this recording session. Next card is the Melody of the Awakening Dragon, ultra rare. All right, the first edition of this one is 98 cents. However, unlimited is a dollar and one cent. So actually more, but again, I'm sure it'll depreciate. And then the last ultra rare is the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. First edition is $2.64, however, the uh, unlimited is three dollars and seven cents, so actually higher again. But I'm sure we'll kind of weigh back down in due time. Just give it time. Just give it time. Before we dive too much into Kaibo, we do have, of course, the last two: the Proton, Proton, <laughs> Phantom Nightmare. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like still stuck with the Proton. Uh, but anyway, Phantom Nightmare. Obviously, the high value price here is the quarter century rares. The Bestower of Flames, as well as the Low the Prayer of the Voiceless Voice. So, a lot of these cards are well over $200, so definitely holding its value strong. Um, and there's other other high value quarter century rares that are like well over $100 as well. So, definitely some good cards to get from this set. I don't think I pulled any, any quarter century rares from this yet either. I know I pulled an Ultra Rev at Low the Prayer of Voiceless, but not uh not quarter century rare all right we have the white reincarnation which is a perfect segue 
into, of course, the Kaibadex, the Mystic Potato, not quite a good segue, the Illusionist, the Earthbound Fusion, the Possessor of the Tea Jar, the White Sea Fish or Sunfish, the Prayers of the Voiceless Voice, the Golem of the Jess Grinder, and a super rare only, but you know, very cute card. The, um, the Aura Malathith Rosemary. I'm sure I pronounced it excellently. The next of the Phantom Nightmare, not Proton, Phantom. Just take, a, just take a Phantom Menace, how about that? Just take a Phantom Menace. There was actually an interview, or not an interview, but like a, uh, I guess the mother um, spoke about, uh, you know, him and, and, and acting, whatever. Because if you remember, the story is the the, the, the little kid who played uh, Anakin, uh, he quit acting because he was being bullied in school. But the reason why he quit acting was more so family related issues and whatnot. So, but still, you know, we are, we are, the, for those that are, you know, bullied, definitely that's not cool. But, you know, it's, uh, it's good to see that he wasn't really bullied. It was just more about like, you know, just taking care of his family and everything going on with that situation. The Summoning Beast. The Master of Ham. Hamlet. The White Aura something or other. And we do pull a Secret Rare. Okay, this is a, a new card for me in my collection. The Majestic Specter Orchardus, new, secret rare. A very cool looking card. Let's check out the value in this one. I forgot to value the other card, the Rosemary one, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't worth much. If you're, if you're curious, it was like 22 cents. Now the new card. There is a quarter century rare version of this card and it's actually one of the lowest quarter century rares, which gives you an idea. This secret rare is only $1. <laughs> At 19 cents so definitely not super high value at all it's pretty I guess you know the, the shimmer and whatnot but not a collector's piece unless you're unless you just collect uh, quarter century rares just to collect it all right guys we, we're going back to of course the Kaiba cards here we have a uh, of course the blue eyes the original well not uh, it's actually not the original design but the anime design if you will this is the original design from the LOB sets. And this is the, uh, I guess the one with the tablet in, in the rear. So th three different versions. The Dragon Spirit of White. We have the Kaiba Man. Kaiba Man, Kaiba Man. The White Stone of Legends. The White Stone of Ancients. The Protector of the Eyes Blue. With Eyes of Blue. And he doesn't even have blue eyes. Oh no, he does. Okay. <laughs> the master of the eyes of blue. The battle ox. Another classic, classic card. Lujin. The Vol Vols Raider. I don't remember him ever using this one. The um, um, Alexadrite uh, Dragon. But it's a dragon card, so maybe. The Blade Knight. The Ancient Lamp. The Tiger Dragon. Okay. Go ahead and uh, make bust these out real quick. King of the Swamp. What is this? Rider. Looks kind of interesting, I guess. The Rider, Burst Dream of Destruction, Beacon of White, something, Mausoleum, I guess, Mausoleum of White, Palmization, the Palmization, Enemy Controller, of course, you have to have that, have to have that. the String Card, I think you used that once in the anime, uh, the Silent Doom. Ancient Rules, 
Raiden. Where are thou? The pot of words I can't pronounce, I guess. The fusion substitute. Un unexpected die. Negate attack. Very classic, but better as an ultra. Final, uh, final attack order. The shadow spell. Cloning. Fusion reserves. Jar of Arborus or something like that. The, uh, what is ter terrible centering though? The uh, Azure Eyes Silver Dragon. The First of Dragons. And of course the token card. Looking very, very classy. I love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of upset though. That, that, like all the, all the other token cards look good, but th this token is like super off center. And this is the one I actually really wanted. Look how terrible the centering is. It's like, it's like too long or too thick in the, the left side here and then like thin on the left side. So left to right centering is terrible. And top to bottom is equally terrible too because super thick in the bottom and then like thin in the top. So top, bottom, left and right, terrible centering. So this is like, and this is the card I really wanted as a token card. And um, 73 cents, but with that centering, easily like 50 cents probably. You dropped it like 20% probably. I don't know anybody that likes who likes cards that are not centered properly. Anyway guys, we're gonna go into this right here and then we'll, we'll conclude today's episode. We, we obviously see the very first card there. Well, let's open it up and see. All right, the first card here is the Dark Burning Attack. Magician Girl, of course, in the forefront. Setting on this one is actually pretty bad too. God damn it. So the Dark Burning Attack, the first edition is 62 cents. However, the, uh, the Unlimited version is about the same, 62 cents. So yeah. But it's still a Dumbish Girl, so very pretty. The next here is the Dark Burning Attack. So this one is different. Um, the first edition price is $2.43 with the unlimited version about the same, $2.43. Equally terrible centering. All right, the final card, Secret Rare, is the Eternal Soul. I'm not sure who would use this, if this is a Kaiba card or not. All right, so $2.66, um, but it's about the same. So $2.66 for the Eternal Soul to finish it off. Well, yeah, guys, that pretty much includes this box, the reprint of the Legendary Deck 2. Was it, was it a good investment to keep it back in 2016? In some regard, yes, especially if you keep it sealed. But I'm looking at the uh, the individual cards themselves, probably not so much. Because uh, if you just go ahead with the individual price, the highest price card, first edition, is that Blue Eyes White Dragon version 2 at $7.74. So yeah, individually, they suck. Not gonna lie. But if you just keep it sealed and never, never, never open it, <laughs> then it might be worth like maybe 150 bucks. With the original price being for us, like I mentioned, three dollars so nevertheless guys hope you guys enjoyed it thank you guys so much for the view in the next video i think we're coming out with a new set maybe i think when is the next new set coming out yeah it's looking like the next Yu-Gi-Oh set is coming out like in april 25th so um so about another month or so but the next upcoming set that i might open up maybe is uh from the pokemon series is the uh, Temporal Forces. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I want to see what cards are in there to see if it's even worth my attention. Um, but since we don't have uh, Leaven here anymore for the Pokemon side of the house, we'll definitely have to see if I, if I even want it as a collector. But uh, we'll definitely check it out and see and keep you posted. But it's supposed to be coming out next week. But uh, we'll see how that goes. But anyway, love you guys so much. Um, I guess I'll see you in the Legacy of Destruction. But we do have other, other sets coming out that are old. If you, if you look at my backboard right there, some old cards that I want to uh, like revisit or reshow or whatever the case is. And I'll definitely want to show that with you as well. So maybe we'll get some luck. Who knows? But love you guys. As I mentioned, thank you so much for the view. And I'll definitely see you next time. My name is Talos. This, of course, 
is the legendary deck number two. And I'll definitely see you next time. Peace.